Assalamu alaikum. My name is Jamie and I converted to Islam a week and a half ago. Wow. Before I became a Muslim, I was not a very conservative person. I was not I was not a very good person. Uh, I modeled for Playboy. I did that for about five years, and during that time, um, I, I did a lot of drugs. And I thought, oh, I can do meth, and I won't get addicted because I'm just using it as a as a weight loss helper, and you know, I I'll just use it every once in a while to just keep myself from eating so much. Yeah, right. I thought I was strong enough to not get addicted to a drug that absolutely addicts basically everyone who uses it. So I started doing meth, and. I would probably give it a couple weeks and then I got really addicted to it and I did it all day and all night for five years. And it really brought me to a place of complete rock bottom. And my husband at that time had been doing it with me and he started getting violent with me and I was afraid for my life. So uh, I decided to quit. I decided that that's not what I wanted for my life. And I told him, I said, I'm going to quit. And he laughed at me and he said, yeah, right, you're not going to quit. And I said, you know what? I'm going to quit. I quit that day cold turkey. Never again looked back. I didn't have any type of rehab, no outside help, no support system. I had my husband laughing at me and trying to get me to do it again. After that, I had my little boy. My whole focus on life kind of changed. I, I had this wonderful little boy who needed a good mother and I, I loved him so much I wanted to change everything that I focused on for him. All right, guess what's gonna happen? The train's gonna take off. Look at that plane! <laughs> Back in the day I could do anything I wanted. I, I was very involved in basically the Hollywood scene that anybody would want to be involved in. A lot of people are surprised that I gave that up in order to become a Muslim, but the funny thing is, is, is when I said my Shahada, the desire to do all those things was completely taken away from me. I used to drink, did drugs, you know, all that stuff. I don't want to do them anymore. It's amazing to me that I, I really enjoy and feel peaceful in my heart about being a Muslim. I was born and raised a uh, non-denominational, charismatic, born-again Christian, and I didn't find answers for what I was looking for for 31 years as a Christian. I never really felt God. I tried as hard as I could, I really did, and I never felt Him. The whole thing that started leading me to Islam was uh, I got married to an Iranian man who was a very devout, born-again, charismatic, non-denominational Christian. And he was, he was mentally and emotionally abusive to me, and not to mention the fact that he was poisoning me uh, just so that he could control me. He wanted to keep me at home, not able to leave the house, just so he knew where I was at all times. So I left him, and um, that kind of started me on a whole new journey to seek what was really truly going on in the world. My name is Muhammad Faqih and I'm the Imam uh, and the Religious Director of the Islamic Institute of Orange County. Uh, became the Imam here in 2006 and I have been uh, serving in that role uh, ever since. Uh, our community is very uh, diverse. We have so many uh, you know, people uh, who represent pretty much uh, a very wide uh, ethnic uh, group. So we have uh, immigrants and we have indigenous um, you know, people. We have uh, uh, you know, Arabs, non-Arabs, uh, uh, and even the Arabs are you know, from a, a wide range of places. Recently we have been having a very interesting uh, increase in the number of people who become Muslim. One to two individuals a week become Muslim since the beginning of the year. This is this year. This is not every year, but this year. 
this inc inc increased wave of uh, hate and bigotry uh, against Muslims um, is actually causing more people to investigate and learn about Islam, and many of them, you know, end up choosing you know, Islam as as their way of life. I researched Islam for a while before I chose to convert. Uh, basically, I wanted to know why people hated Muslims so much because, you know, I saw what I saw in the news. I saw the oppression and the violence, and I wanted to know what really existed and if that was the way that Islam was. So I started researching it, and the more and more I researched it, the deeper I got into it, I saw, I saw the truth in it. I think the main thing that I liked about Islam was the respect for women. There is, there is a large amount of respect for women and the things that we do as women. Our lives aren't easy. We have a lot of things that we have to think and worry about. Our families, our husbands, our children. I mean, we have to bear children. That's a really hard thing to go through. And, you know, a lot of us have to cook and clean and work and raise children and take care of, you know, the house and our husband. It's, it's a difficult job. And the fact that Islam respects women for that and, you know, they separate us, they separate us at mosques so that the men aren't distracted by us because they understand, Islam understands the power that we have behind our, well, I guess you could say our sexuality, the way that we look is powerful to men and they're affected by it. And Islam respects that. Once I realized that, it really just, it grabbed a hold of me. And that's when I knew I wanted to become a Muslim. How many Frankies do you have? Converting to Islam made me feel different. It made me feel absolutely peaceful. It, uh, it took away, I, I felt unstable before. I felt like a lot of things in my life were, were just up and down. And there was a lot of things that were up and down because they hadn't been decided on. There was no, there was no goal in mind. There was no reasoning for me being here. There, you know, I didn't know why I should be here. And converting to Islam gave me the peace and the security and the just the balance that I needed in my life. It made everything make sense. It made everything real. And it made everything worth being here for because I finally have a purpose and I understand what it is. We don't always have the opportunity to meet people that we essentially need to meet in order to understand them. So I started going to mosque in order to really get close to the people and understand them. And the more I got involved in the mosque, the more the women just surrounded me and took me in. And they've really shown me the kindness that is Islam. I never, ever, 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 ever in my life would have would have ever thought that I'd become a Muslim ever never ever my my perception of them was so misconceived that I didn't like them because I believe media and I thought that they were bad and never in a million years would I have thought that one day I'd be one of them but now that I am I am so proud. I am so happy. I, I want to wear hijab because I want people to know that I'm Muslim. Even if they hate me, I don't care. I want to show them that Allah exists in any kind of person, not just Middle Eastern. I played drums before I was Muslim, and just because I became a Muslim doesn't mean I have to stop doing the things that I enjoy. I do a lot of sports snowboarding, wakeboarding, you can do all those things and still be a good Muslim and still wear hijab. My dad never really knew about my past with the drugs and the playboy modeling and all that stuff. He and I didn't speak for eight years. He kicked me out of the house when I was 17 years old and I lived under a freeway overpass 
for a week. I was homeless and all I had with me was what I could fit into my backpack and my bass guitar. So we didn't speak for eight years after that and he didn't understand or wouldn't have understood is that these are experiences that I needed to have on my own. I needed to, to have the pain on my own and I needed to have the recovery on my own. The only reason why I started speaking to him again was because I got pregnant with my son and I, I figured that my son needed a grandfather. When I did come back and finally start speaking to him again, we had a, a beautiful conversation together and we discussed what had happened before and we both apologized to each other and promised to never do it again. So. This is my daddy, and he's my best friend in the whole wide world. And that's something I never thought was going to happen. But now that it has, I love him so much. The first time my dad learned about my conversion, I was on my way home from Sacramento. I had just gone to a mosque up there and converted. And I was, I was driving home and I was too afraid to call him because I knew he was going to be really mad. So I, I texted him on the phone and I said, Dad, can you please try to start having an open mind about Muslims? Can you please start just not being so judgmental and believing everything you see on the news? And he texted me back and said, why? So I said, well, Dad, um, I'm Muslim. My, my father was not too pleased when he found out that I converted to Islam. He was quite unhappy uh, to the point where I've, I feared that I was going to have to leave. We, we live in the same home and we work at the same job and I haven't gone back to the job since. But living at home has been very tense. He's, he's been very, uh, very confrontational about it at times. Wow. Another text from my dad trying to protect me, which I understand. Um, he's definitely misinformed as to what is going on with Islam. He says that if I ever change my mind and decide to leave Islam, that the Muslims will threaten and kill me and my dad and my son. Basically, it's all him trying to protect me and asking me to be careful and trying to show me what the real side of Islam is about, but the problem is, is he doesn't know what the real side is because he's not involved in it. Once you become involved in Islam, the true and correct and pure Islam, you understand what the truth is. He's reaching the point now, I've, I've had conversations with him about it, trying to show him what true Islam is, and that it's not what he's seen on the news, it's not what he thinks it is. So I've been working with him, trying to show it to him piece by piece, and he's now finally starting to, he's finally starting to come around and, and have some acceptance towards me about it. I'm looking forward to, to watching him grow with that as I blossom and, and grow in Islam. Islam is not what he thinks it is, and if he sees me doing good deeds and kindness towards him and towards others, I think it'll really help open his eyes to what is really going on. I think the biggest thing that I pray for is for understanding, for strength from myself to keep going through what I'm going through, and for understanding from my father so that he can understand that what I'm going through isn't easy and that it it hurts me just as much as it hurts him. So hopefully, by the grace of Allah, he will one day understand and be accepting and gracious towards my decision. And I think step by step, he's seeing the change in me and he's learning to appreciate what I'm, what I'm doing, what I'm learning, 
and hopefully one day that'll help him see and view Islam in a more positive way. Being an American, there are a lot of things Americans do that don't coincide with Islam. And I've basically had to really learn what is what is halal and what is haram. And you know, I don't want to do anything that's haram, obviously. I don't want to sin. So it's very important to me to find out what these things are. I don't know what all of them are yet. I'm obviously I've only been in this a week and a half and there are a lot of things that I'm still learning. It's difficult for me to understand a lot of what is going on uh, when I'm around uh, Muslim people, when I'm at the mosque, because a lot of it is in Arabic, and I don't speak Arabic yet, but I, I have a strong desire to learn it. Uh, as far as the Quran is concerned, I think, you know, I'm reading it in English now, and I want to learn it in its purest form, and that would be to, to learn it in Arabic. I have the Arabic version, I like to look at it, but I don't understand what it's saying. Um, but I am in the process of learning the alphabet and learning what the handwriting looks like so I can understand it. And I really want to read the Quran in its, in its purest form. And the only way to do that is to learn Arabic and read the Quran in Arabic. So it's only my first week and a half of, um, of being Muslim. So I obviously don't know any Arabic yet, and you know I try to read the Quran and I have the translation. I have it in Arabic. I have it uh, in the Arabic written language for Americans, and then I also have it in English. So pretty much the only thing I really know how to say in Arabic that I can recognize and understand is "In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful." which is Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Other than that, I'm learning. Tabara Kalazi Nazala Furkana Allah Abdihil Lia Kuna Lil Alamina Nazira Alazi Lahu Mukuza Mawati Wal Arz Wal Arzi Walam Yatakis Waladan Wa Lam Yakulahu Sharinkun Filmuki Wa Kalakwa Kula Shayin Fakwadara Hu Takdira <laughs> that was difficult. I sound like a three-year-old learning to read. <laughs> Jaden really loves, um, he really loves going to mosque, and he really loves doing salat with me, and he really loves wearing the thobe. He gets excited about it, and he, he feels really good about it, which is great. It's precious to me that he is actually really involved in it and enjoying it and seeing what it opens up for him. He saw what it changed in me and it brought a lot more calmness, a lot of calmness, a lot of kindness and a lot of more stability than what I had before and he, he feels that and it, I think it really has affected him in a very positive way. One of the things that I have had to change is the fact that I want to eat halal. And there are a lot of places out here that don't serve halal food. I've been eating at a lot of uh, a lot of Persian and Arabian restaurants simply because they serve halal. Fortunately for me, there is a uh, halal butcher within an hour of driving distance, or else I wouldn't be able to eat meat at home. There's a lot of fast food around. There's a lot of easy ways to eat meat that are quick. Because out here, you know, it's Everyone's so busy working and running around and doing their calendars and their schedules and their, their kids have this and that going on. It's, it's crazy out here. So when we really take the time to think about what we're putting in our bodies and, and how we want ourselves to feel and be, 
I don't think it would be as hard for people as they think it would be if they felt the true grace of Allah. Since becoming a Muslim, since, uh, since putting on the hijab and kind of traveling around a little bit in the neighborhood, I, the only Muslims I've met are, the, are these really wonderful men at the gas station locally. And it's, it's now the only gas station I'll go to. They're, they're great, they're wonderful, they want to help me. Converting to Islam, uh, being an American and, and converting, you start to notice the negativity that people have towards you. But the neat thing about it is I wasn't raised in Islam, so the fact that it's a choice of mine and not something that I kind of have to do because my parents say so, make it, make it easier for me, I think. So having a support system of, of everyone at the mosque behind me, I mean, especially all the women there, they're, they're very strong in supporting me. I've made a lot of new friends, good people, and they all, they're all you know, texting me and calling me and, and making sure that I'm happy and that I'm doing okay and that I don't have any questions and that they're spending time with me and making me feel good about my choice because they understand that it's not easy for an American to become a Muslim. You know, you, you get a lot of judgment. <laughs> Woo, I'm dizzy. <laughs> I still dress very colorful. I'm just a colorful kind of girl, but I, I dressed in the brightest colors I could, in the most revealing clothing that I could, because I wanted the attention. I felt like I needed the attention because that was where my self-esteem came from. Now that I'm wearing hijab, I still have that same confidence. In fact, if anything, I have more because I don't need that attention anymore. I don't need that self-fulfillment because I have that self-fulfillment now. And it came from the right source. It came from Allah. And that is the biggest source of self-fulfillment that you can get. I started wearing hijab the first day that I converted. Uh, within an hour after converting, I drove to a, a shop and bought complete hijab because I felt like that what, that's what would be most respectful to Allah and that's what would be most respectful to myself because I didn't want men looking at me and thinking things in their minds that aren't appropriate. I want for them to look at me and appreciate me for who I am on the inside because that's, that's really what matters, you know. I've, I've spent enough years with men looking at me in that way in bikinis and, you know, everything that I used to wear and I, I don't need that. And I, I want to respect the religion, I want to respect Islam and I want to respect the law and I want to respect myself. I would love it if you would come with me to go through my closet and basically experience with me the changes that I'm going through. You know, I kind of feel like a butterfly, like I was once wrapped in a cocoon, and I was wrapped in a cocoon of sin, of everything that was making my life toxic and wrong. And now I've finally come out of it, and I've become a butterfly. Butterflies change colors. Butterflies look different. So it's time for you to come with me and see me change into a butterfly. So here we are at my closet, and there is a lot of stuff in here that I, I have to get rid of. I'm sorry to say that I used to wear this. It's definitely not long, so got rid of that. I have these, and I like to wear these with shorts very short shorts or schoolgirl skirts or even booty shorts. So I guess you kind of know what I used to wear, huh? On a more serious note, doing this has made me feel extremely liberated. It's, it's basically me cutting out my past and allowing the new me to shine through. And you know, you can make a conversion to Islam and feel it, but not live it. And this is me showing you my dedication to living it. I'm not just a hijab wearer, I'm a new person. And being that new person involves cutting out all my past. And my, my slate is wiped clean, so here you go. Clean slate. There's a quote that I really, really like. It says, just as a caterpillar thought that the world was coming to an end, it became a butterfly. Totally my story. Aw, thank you. Some people ask me, 
Uh, actually, a lot of people ask me if I'm 100% sure in my decision because they think, oh, you know, she never said anything about this before, so this must be just the decision she just made on the fly, something temporary. You know, she'll, it's just a phase. She'll go through it and she'll be, you know, back to Jamie in the short skirts. And I wouldn't have made the decision to convert if I wasn't absolutely, positively, without a doubt, sure that this was the right decision, sure that this is the truth. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have fallen in love with it. Now that I've converted to Islam, I want to help uh, change the face of what people see Islam to be. I want to show people that Muslims are caring. We're friendly, we're nice people, we care about our neighbors, we care about the people around us. And if people see more Muslims behaving that way, we can change people's opinions. I, I think that that's really the path I'm supposed to take right now. And however I'm meant to do that is, you know, that's up to a lot. They'll tell me. But I would also like to learn everything about Islam and hopefully one day be able to use it to speak to women and to speak to Muslim women and help them and teach them and guide them. I think that that's an important thing to do. Now that I'm a Muslim, the things that I see for the truth, the things that I can see for real, mean more to me than anything I've ever done. And if I can help a single person feel what I feel inside, my life would be complete. So, as long as I'm here, I will do everything I can to help everyone see the truth. And that's what I think is my job.